might be reaching my Brad threshold for the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I do. Why is all my Id- why are all my ideas stuff that you want to roll your eyes about? But you want to come up with some stupid, ridiculous shit, and I'm supposed to jump on board with that? What What is stupid and ridiculous? What everything you say? <laughs> That's the cop out. It your is face weak. is a cop out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Now you're resorting to my levels of intellectual. Yeah, yeah stooped real low. Yeah. <laughs> I'm small. (laughs) Yeah. I'm sure everyone who's listening gets the visual of me being short. I'm sure. Hey, everybody. It's Brad. Yeah. Nobody gets that joke because they weren't there that day, but it is still, it's still like the first time I ever saw you in delirious, embarrassed laughter. It still was a magic. Looking back, it was a magical day. Yeah. Your your dad was even standing there looking at you like, "What the hell?" That's my way of saying, "What the fuck am I doing here?" <laughs> None of us wants me here, especially me. <laughs> so hey, everybody, <laughs> it's me, Brad. You know that's. I, None of us wants me here. <laughs> yeah. So I just went a little cuckoo there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Because you flatulated in the middle of an audition. Yeah, but... Nobody knew that except for you, but you somehow were... You just, like, in the own self-conscious thing, you assumed everybody must have heard that. But also would smell it. But no one smelled it or heard it, and I was the only one in on the joke. Yeah. You were just laughing at me. I was laughing at you devolving into madness. Like, what is that guy laughing about? He's in the middle of an audition. (laughs) Yeah, don't fart in your audition. <laughs> Actor's rule book number one. Yeah, which I guess means don't eat before an audition. So, mm. welcome to movieisms. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Brad. I've got no... None of us wants me here. Yeah, that's the <laughs> mood I'm in right now. <laughs> so, um, well, this week we we were excited to get to go see a movie that was just oh. like... That wasn't part of a f- continuing franchise of billions of dollars. It wasn't a award um, type drama or a movie or anything like that. Even though we have enjoyed getting to see a couple more interesting movies recently, it was just a, like a fun. What we thought was a horror movie. What was fun it was like a genre bending horror movie named Overlord. The thing about this movie is here. First, we're gonna we're gonna zoom out just a little bit. So the Grinch also came out, and the girl in the spider's web came out. Oh, that might be interesting. And Overlord came out. There are other movies that also came out, but those were the big three. The Grinch. I don't want to see that. Made $67 million. It's Sunday right now as we're recording, so the weekend isn't even over yet, and it's already made $67 million. So Yeah, anything for kids. Spider's web, we were on the spider's web, tanked, and Overlord tanked. Now, what Those I see... Those are the two good movies this weekend. What I see is The Grinch, movie that's been released once every decade. There's been some version of it for the last 20 or 30 years. Not, not even every decade. Something every just something every four or five years, it seems like. There's a new Grinch something or other coming out. And then Spider's Web. I don't know if that's very good or not. I know that I got tired of seeing the trailer because they've been playing it for about four months. Like, just nonstop. Since the beginning of summer, they started playing it. Yeah. And now it comes out, it doesn't seem to have great reviews. It looks like it would be good. I don't know. I don't know. I liked the first one. But the problem with the first one, the first American one, I've only seen the first... The first one from Sweden, the original one. I've mm-hmm. only seen the first one of those. I have not seen any others or read any of the books. I've heard that the original foreign language ones are the best. Yes. However, the David Fincher one that had uh, Rumi Mara in it was great. It was brutal. Everything you want from a David Fincher movie, it was all in there. Especially the the... The rape scene was the, like the the revenge on the rapist that she oh, got right, yeah. was, dude. That was just like 
hard to watch, but deliciously hard to watch. Mm -hmm. She really gets the guy. It was great. Um, But now what we, so what we have is like Spider's Web is a continuing franchise. The Grinch is a. That's a continuing, continuing. It's not even a continuing franchise. It's they just keep remaking the same thing over and over and over again. It's a the franchise is one moving along. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But the most interesting one to me, before we even saw it, was Overlord. And now that we've seen it, it's a great movie. The end shows over. Yeah, it's a great movie. That's our review. It's got like VA. all this. So what we have is the oh. most interesting, and you would you could say original movie re- released on a wide scale this week yeah. is doing poorly at the box office. Yeah. For those of you who are listening, and and like the last episode, we went on for like ten minutes not talking about the movie, we're just talking about BS. So this time we're just coming out saying Overlord is awesome. If that's all you want to hear, and you're done, bye. Have a good time. But we're going to sit here and talk for probably another 30 or 40 minutes because that's what we do. (laughs) None of us want you here. I know. (laughs) None of us want you here. (laughs) No. So my problem with The Grinch is that it it is just a constant. and, and And the thing is, they put it out. It does well. Five years to put out another one. It will do well. It'll do well. It'll do well. And it's just like. I. There's new kids every 10 years. There's so new kids every day. Do a new Grinch. I don't see why they couldn't watch the old Grinch. I don't know. They could. And they if, probably if, have. They've point, probably seen all the different at Grinches. At this point, it should be the parents' job to make that thing stay alive. Parents, show your kids the Grinch. So that I, and it's, it's, I will probably go see the Grinch. I don't really want to see it. I'll um, probably go see it. I'll probably take my daughter to yeah, see it. One of those things. You and her go see it. And I love Benedict Cumberbatch. I love saying I love his him. name out loud. He sounds like a Bond villain. He's <laughs> but, awesome. But I love that he guy. He should be a Bond villain. Why isn't he a Bond villain? He could be James Bond. He could be. He could be either one. Yeah. He's awesome. How about we do put him in the next a Bond spinoff movie. franchise where the Bond villain becomes Bond and nobody knows it. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. And not, then we could get off of the whole Bond it's not, thing. It's not ever going to happen because, in fact, it's not ever going to happen because they're worried about making James Bond black. There's I was a, there's say, a big campaign for Idris Elba to yeah, be the new James Bond. And he's him. so fucking cool. I would, I would, I would drop everything to go see that guy be James Bond. He's the sexiest man of the year. If you don't know, is that your opinion or <laughs> is that just your opinion? <laughs> Nobody wants my opinion. I thought we've established that. Yeah, he's the sexiest man alive. Um, sexiest last year, man alive. last year for some reason it was Blake Shelton. This year it's <laughs> Atrus Elba. <laughs> right. So it, yeah, Idris Elba as James Bond that would and be cool. Benedict Cumberbatch. As a villain. Yeah, that would be great. He could be Khan from Star Trek. Just take that character, put it in the Bond universe, <laughs> and it would be great. <clears throat> anyway, I just... I, the, the rehashing of the same thing over and over and over again. And I realize that they do that with... And I'm, not, I'm not even saying... That they do that with a lot of things. Um, rehashing of saying... And the constant rebooting of franchises and reboot. They reboot the reboot. They're, they're not sequels. They're just like... They're rebooting it every couple of years. And I just get tired of seeing the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. And they pummel you with the trailers. They they make you have to go see it. You know, fear of missing out, the FOMO. Yeah. They make you have to go see it because, like, what if this is the best version of the thing you've seen 20 yeah. other times before? By the way, that's a strategy <clears throat> that actually works. Like, that's how they get uh, get us to like songs that we actually initially hate. Um, cause they play it over and over on the radio. It burns in your brain. And everyone, yeah. So eventually yeah. you've heard enough times that the, your, your, the melody is in your head and then you start like, oh, it's not that bad. Everyone else likes it. The next thing you know, you like the song. You mean like this? I get knocked down, but I get up again. Oh God! I could not listen to that song one more oh, time. My God. That's, that song had, a, has a lot to do with why I do not listen to music on the radio anymore. Yeah. Pandora or you do Apple Music, I think. Yeah. 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 Just anything but that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I can't stand radio anymore. It's just the same five songs over and over again. And they're all crap. Because they have so much crap that they need to (laughs) shovel into our ears that they got to 
<laughs> make us like it. Yeah. Yeah. The the this is for another show. Maybe we should start a whole music. Oh and, my god! But the musical intelligence of the world is severely dropping. There's no such thing as knowing about. And we're not music. even going to get into the in my day music was blah blah. Dude, Just we forget will, that. We will reach a point in time. Maybe not. Probably not in our lifetimes because you're almost dead. As it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, in in generation, a few generations from now, we might not even, you know how some people don't even know what the, the uh, like, the old instruments are? Like, yeah. well, like, it, like a trumpet, which is a very common instrument now. In a couple hundred years, people might be like, what's that? This is a trumpet. You mean you actually blow into it and it makes sounds? That's such a foreign idea. You mean I can't just punch a number? Punch a button on my iPhone and make a new song just by clicking the right three switches? Like, yeah. yeah. Clicking switches. That's very... Pushing buttons. (laughs) Yeah. That's also... Click a switch. You know, know, switches are also a dead language. Nobody flips switches anymore. They can't even turn the lights on and off. They have to tell, like, Amazon... Alexa, turn the lights on. Yeah. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. (laughs) We're all lazy. Nobody does anything anymore. All right. So, <laughs> I'm old. however, all we're all we're saying is the movie that seemed most interesting to us this weekend was Overlord, and I'm glad we did go see it because it was it. You don't really know what to expect from the trailer because it looks like it might just be like a horror movie set in World War II, and it is in a little small nugget. But it isn't. There's like a whole lot more going on. Well, it's a horrifying movie as far yeah. as the war is hell aspect. Like it starts off with yeah. with a bang, literally. Like they're in a plane and the plane goes boom. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The beginning sequence is amazing. Like It starts out, right? It starts out in yeah. an airplane. Yeah, the credits fade in and it starts out. They're in an airplane and they're about to... They're about to uh, well, they're... Uh, jump right and they're all waiting till they get to a certain point and then all hell breaks loose and the plane starts coming apart in the air they're like ah screw it everybody get out now so Um, here's the here's the little story synopsis a little squad of american soldiers find horror behind enemy lines on the eve of d-day june june 6 1944 i think is when yeah june 6 1944 so there's a little history lesson for you right great um you're welcome uh, it is full of people that I feel like I recognized, but don't know who they are. You know what I mean? You know? I think I recognize the the woman, but I don't know. Giovanna Depo plays Boyce. Wyatt Russell plays Ford. Matilda Olivier. Olivier? Yeah, I don't recognize Plays a woman named, a French woman named Chloe. And then, uh, there's another guy in a... John, the guy who played the guy Tibbet, the the sort of like the New Yorker, the standard World War II New, New York soldier, guy, yeah. John Magaro. I feel like I've seen him in things before, but didn't I couldn't really place it. This movie has a guy from uh, Mar- uh, Marvel Agents of Shield, the science guy. Oh, the the guy that got shot and they inject the shit. Into. Is that show still on? I don't know. Oh well. Um. I can't tell. Anyway, so it's uh, it is produced by J.J. J. Abrams. So the movie is a genre movie. It's like I'm going to go see a movie where I know it's going to be totally like thriller t- style stuff. It starts out they they jump out of the airplane, but it's ve- the the sequence of the the opening sequence. You're like, if this movie even comes close to matching that opening the intensity of that opening yeah. sequence we're gonna be okay but it was so good so like just chaotic jumping out of the airplane and all that stuff that you are sitting thinking there's no way they can keep this up the whole movie because that was great by the way we've seen uh an opening like that before um where you basically not necessarily first person perspective, but like you you fall out of the plane with the person, yeah. and you know bullets are flying everywhere and all that. Mm-hmm. We've seen it before. I don't remember what movie, but it's more intense in this movie because I yeah. feel like the camera is more 
like it's it's almost like a GoPro on the guy yeah. to where uh, you're you're just you feel like you are uh, what do they call it when you jump off with with somebody else when you jump out of an airplane it's there's two of you tandem tandem yeah, yeah. you feel like you're on a tandem uh, sky jumping thing with this guy because i mean everything that's happening you you see it over the sh- over his shoulder yeah. behind him you're seeing all this sh- stuff happen um but and it really feels like i mean you really know after this sequence you know what it's like to have jumped out of yeah. a plane while a war is going on because damn that was yeah. intense it's like and you could see he like he was struggling the whole time to pull his chute yeah and as chaotic as everything was you could understand tumbling right you could understand why it was so hard for him to get the cord and pull it and you know something i never really thought about first of all the the, what you the 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 look of the thing like you said the gopro look where it's Mm -hmm. pointing back at the subject it reminded me right away of a video of the opening of a video game it it, almost like halo where we're talking about halo yesterday so maybe that's why it was in my mind um where it starts, hey guys, we got this made crazy major thing happening, and then you you like the the the, the bay door opens and like all the peop- just stuff just comes right at you. Mm-hmm. But if you remember when you're like playing video games, you could change the perspective from first person to where the camera spins around and sees that character, mm-hmm. and it sort of stays with you. So you almost and that's what that opening felt like to me. It felt like a like a a really good opening to a video game. And actually, throughout the movie, it felt like a video game. Like, like this is the, this is the, uh, you know, what, what the set piece. This is the set piece we're in now. Like, parts of it reminded me a little bit of Wolfenstein, 3D from yeah. way way back because they're in the German Nazi thing, and mm-hmm. the, like the walls look the same, and they're sort of like, like caverns and things that you're like the, the the twisty turning hallways that they were in. Yeah. Um. So it it felt good. However. The so, for me, the the best war is hell movie um, in modern history. Like they had classic war is hell movies from like the forties and fifties, like almost like propaganda films. But is uh, Saving Private Ryan? If you remember that opening sequence there on the beach, it, oh, that right. was D Day. Like yeah. that was D Day, and like it was just crazy, violent. Like there was no surviving it mm-hmm. feeling. That's. That's what this felt like, but it was a little more, like, pulpy. Like, a little more, like, uh, horror film style. Like, it it didn't have, like, the true feeling. You know, it didn't feel like it was just a documentary and we were watching these people suffer. It wasn't as... Yeah. But the the deaths and the... The, uh, the happenstance of maybe you survive, maybe you don't through this little gauntlet of terror yeah. um, was really, like, visceral. It's a yeah, good word. because there, people are dying left and right all through the yeah. movie. Yeah, and I never thought about until, like, my grandfather flew uh, B-17s, and he was in Italy and, in World War II, so he was dropping bombs. So he never had people jumping out of his airplane. But those guys... If that's at all what it felt like to to be in there, it's like it really did make you think about, you know. And it's veterans, it's Veterans Day weekend, so I wonder if that's why this movie came out then, even though it's totally like a genre thing. We we thank them for their service by watching. Thank Overlord. you for your service, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but just think about it. This guy, he didn't like. They're in a plane. Shit's going down inside the plane. You can't stay in the plane because the plane is, like, being shot at and all that stuff. Yeah, I was thinking, there was a moment where I was with the character, the main, well, I guess it's the character you bond with because the camera's on him the most at the beginning, uh, and he seems like the newbie. Um, But there was a moment where I was like, um, you know what, maybe you should just stay on the plane. (laughs) Stay on the plane. (laughs) But then the back of the plane comes off, and you're like, hmm. And it's on fire, yeah. and you're watching other people, uh, other soldiers like fly up into the flames and out the back. And I'm thinking, yeah. no, maybe you ought to. At jump that out point, the like side. I'm terrified of the idea of jumping out of a plane, <laughs> but I'm jumping out of that fucking plane. Yeah. But think about it. He's twisting and turning, and there, are, and it's not like there was just one plane flying, dropping off uh, uh, airborne like paratroopers. There were um, d- many, and there were stuff flying all over the place he could have just as easily like smacked into a plane on his way down you know what i mean 
that's how like chaotic and it really was maybe you survive maybe you don't how many however many yeah. people get down on yeah. the ground that's the people you know what i mean also, it's just so insane also while you're watching the movie Sometimes people die in mid sentence, like you're just talking, everything's fine, and that guy's gone. Gone now. Disintegrated. Yeah. <laughs> Would have made a great chapter in that book, <laughs> you know, which was, we won't say what that was, but yeah, yeah they, they say that later in the thing. Um, so, and then once they get down on the ground, uh, it really is just kind of like a World War II movie, like a mission. They have a yeah. Mission Impossible sort of. For, like, a good portion of it. Yeah. And it starts to slowly... You find some things that hint at Yeah, they're, like, little, like, stuff. what's that? Like I a, don't know. A we... pile of gruesome, yeah. like, uh, you don't know what it is. Is that a hyena? Is that a, a human? What the hell? It's just, yeah. like, goo. What is yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah. And, but it's like, we don't know. We got to go blow that tower up. You know, we can't spend time here on that stuff. But it slowly shifts it never there's a moment in the film where it shifts into the horror movie or into the yeah. to the the thing that we're talking about uh where it quickly shifts like you know there's something going on then suddenly boom now we're in a completely different movie but they're in the same scenario yeah. by the way the best thing about the movie to me was the that everything was character driven yeah. and everything that everyone everything everyone did made sense it seemed mm-hmm. logical at the time as opposed to you know, a lot of movies we watch, you feel like um, we're just trying to get the character from here to there so that we can get to the next scary thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This movie, like, I'll just give you an example. Um, uh, I don't know, you know, I don't know names, but the main character we're with, he's a Boyce. young that black, was his name. black kid. Boyce. His name was Boyce. Boyce? B-O-Y-C-E. Boyce. B-O-Y-C-E. Yeah. Okay, so I don't remember why they sent him outside of the house, mm-hmm. um, but there was a dog. That or a wolf. I don't mm-hmm. even think it was a dog. So mm-hmm. it started. Cha- in <laughs> it was great. He didn't take very long. It's like just a few seconds. And he's like, <laughs> "What?" Well, he just gets up and well, runs. I mean, you know, black people and dogs. <laughs> I know. Yeah, <laughs> but that was exactly what yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah. I was like, "I of course, know." Of course, if a dog was chasing me, it's not really a black white thing. It's, if a dog right. was chasing me too, I'd be getting the fuck out of there. But I, I'm uh, yes, it definitely. Anyway, black or white. <laughs> um, he jumped up and started running from the dog, uh, and just before that, a uh, car, a uh, vehicle, an like enemy vehicle passed. Vehicle, yeah. um, and it made complete sense. That dog was running, uh, catching up to him, yeah. and it made sense for him to jump in the back of yeah. that vehicle. It was like a... Uh, so what you said is that there were actual reasons for things to happen. Right, instead he, of just... Yeah. He was not going to... So when he ran and jumped on that vehicle, he was not trying to go where that vehicle was going. He wasn't going. trying to sneak it, into it the was, base. It was accidental. Like, yeah. he was just supposed to be keeping his eye on something, like, from where he was, I, I think. Yeah. And then suddenly that, that wolf was there, and he was like, well, I got to get away from this thing. So he starts, and he runs and jumps on the closest thing, and then he goes into the belly of the beast, sort of, in yeah. a way. And uh, it just was total accident. Like, he stumbled across it. And it made, storytelling-wise, it made yeah. very good sense it made a lot of sense for that to be the way it happened. And I liked it because it wasn't somebody just like, there's something going on down there. We got to get in there and find out because they're just kind of stumbling along. Like right. they, they're literally, they had dozens of people in that plane with them and like four of them make it. Yeah. You and I think I mean? only one of them knew what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, but it's so it's intense and it's loud. The sound design it really made you feel like you were in there with them, yeah. especially when they're jumping out of the airplane. I don't want to keep going back to the airplane because there's other great stuff in there. But the gun battles that the few gun battles I got in are not Saving Private Ryan style gun battles. They're like just spraying bullets just to get one place to another place. It's not it's not like the war is hell that we're thinking of. For if you're thinking about you know Matt Damon, Tom Hanks, that sort of mm-hmm. thing. It's really just. Um, shoot a couple like cover me while i run over there sort of stuff and uh they they have a mission that they're trying to accomplish and uh they stumble across this like strange bizarre shit that's going down testing facility yeah and which i which i like because there there is truth behind the fact that adolf hitler had a bunch of people yeah um trying everything any fringe science whatever if it was theoried to be a possibility he 
had people find out is there any truth to it because yeah. he wanted if there was any anything more powerful than what man knew at the time he wanted to, to know about yeah. it and use it yeah so it made sense that there would be some kind of a testing facility yeah um so this movie just takes that a little bit further yeah. like what if he did find something yeah. and it was like uh fucked up <laughs> yeah so it's like alternate history yeah in a way but it's uh it's just like a what if it's like yeah. well if all the things we heard about this guy were true and what if they actually did have something what might that look like and yeah. make a horror movie this out is of it? almost like uh well i want to say resident evil but this mm-hmm. is like maybe uh i don't even i don't want to say a pg resident evil but it doesn't go to the lengths of where people are morphing into giant things and their arms turn into tentacles but it is like Resident Evil meets Wolfenstein mm. in a way, if you mm. want to combine game <laughs> <laughs> yeah. stories. Yeah. So it, uh, I've never seen Resident Evil. It's never just played the game, so like I'll just take your undead word for it. mutating people. Yeah. It it was it was it, the thing was it was intense when you come across the bizarre stuff that's happening in there, like the. Uh, um, genetic testing we'll just call it that yeah um you feel it like the performances the actors give to show what their bodies Mm -hmm. are doing the mutations that their bodies are going through look painful and they look unscientific like there's no reason for their bodies to be twisted in that way Right, you know I mean? like uh, so, the bones and horns popping out of people's yeah, backs. Yeah, it stuff looks like, like... Uh, grotesque. Grotesque yeah. is a good word for it. It's like grotesque, and it it's it's creepy and it's unsettling to see, but it's also very effective because it's scary. Like not scary, like Exorcist scary, where it's like truly crawling inside your brain, but you're like, what is going to happen next? Sort of scary. It's like mm-hmm. intense. It keeps you on on the edge, and. There is, um, there's just a lot of a lot of great like character, like you were saying, character stuff and character moments, but also suspense because you know the characters are are the the characters we care about are outnumbered by stuff that yeah. you can't really explain. I want to say too, I really enjoyed the way they told the story in that the audience, we the audience, never knew anything more than what the characters <clears throat> knew. Yeah. So there wasn't a, a cutaway to where the doctor who's, you know, experimenting on everyone explains, this is what we're doing and this is what it does. You know, yeah. no. We only saw what the guy saw. And, and I love that they didn't explain it. There was never a monologuing moment. From yeah. The, vil- the villain. It's just, here's a serum that we're testing on people and this does yeah. this to different The people. main character figures that stuff out. Yeah. And then you have the science guy, the the main the main baddie in this. He, he never really gives a speech either, other than to say these poor worthless people are going to finally find their worth or be worth something and be able to fight for the thousand year Reich. You know yeah. what I mean? And, uh, and what was that they said that a thousand year reign needs thousand year soldiers? Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. And uh, it's just you know. And I, by the way, have no sympathy for. Nazis from the 1940s. I have no sympathy for any Nazis, but have you ever noticed that, like, if you ever just want to make some somebody truly bad, you just say Nazi, and they are like the worst person. You you instantly hate them. It's like somebody that kicks a dog. I hate that guy. Yeah. You know, if you want to make the bad guy really bad, call him a Nazi because these guys, <laughs> Nazis. I mean, they are not. First of all, another thing that that did. It's not that it didn't sit well with me. Another thing that grabbed me about this particular movie is how ugly the Nazis were and th- towards people, and you just automatically hate them, mm-hmm. but also how ugly the self-righteous American soldier was in retaliation for that. Because he was just as bad, ugly, cruel mm-hmm. as everyone else in the movie. I mean, as the Nazis were in the movie. Um, but he was right, so he somehow was able to explain to himself why he was able to act that way because he was right and they were wrong. And in a way it kind of says, look, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. You know, if we get into a pissing contest, the only thing that's going to happen is everybody just gets pissed on. You know what I mean? Sort of a thing. Yeah. 
So it's like brutal, brutal. The deaths in this and the things that happen to people are not, oh, that guy's dead. It's like, oh, shit. That looks like it hurt. Shocking. A lot shocking. of the movie is yeah. shocking. It's sudden and shocking. Like, all of a sudden, boom, oh, that happened. <laughs> Can you give me a few seconds to adjust to what just happened before yeah. we move on with the story? No. <laughs> We're going to keep going. Um, so I really liked it. I mean, I liked it more than I expect to like movies like that when I go see them. Because yeah. um, very rarely do they, for me, for me, very rarely do they do movies like that well that keep me on the edge of my seat. Because I, they, a lot of times they're just doing low-hanging fruit, you know, thrillers yeah. or horror movies. And you're like, okay, it's the thing, it's the scene where the guy explains, yeah. like you were saying, explains what's happening yeah, and to, blah, blah, blah. Most horror movies, they there's just, like a lore reveal where somebody's doing research and then, yeah, you know, this yeah. happened to that. This yeah. didn't do that. It really yeah. did put you into the thing with them. Yeah. And you figured it out as they figured it out. And it kept things suspenseful. I'm I'm sad to hear that the movie's not doing well at the box office because it is original, unique storytelling. And it's a very cool genre blur. Like World War World War Two War is Hell movie mixed with like horror, you yeah. know. Man plays God like horror stories, yeah. Um, ultimate soldier type stuff, but in a horror with a horror twist. It's so you know cool. But initially, the trailers made me think of you probably have never seen it, but the animated movie Heavy Metal. There's a it's like three stories in one overarching mm-hmm. story where this like evil. Mm-hmm. It's, this ball is like this source of evil that flies around and, and uh, creates chaos where it goes. So there is a one of the short animated films in the heavy metal, the original. Uh, there, there are these uh, guys uh, in the army that are on this plane, and the pl- plane crashes just like in this movie. And all the, well, in in the animated thing, all the dead start rising and coming at them. But uh, it reminded me it. So this movie made me think of that little short. I wonder if it was inspired by that, um, because it's so similar. But I loved it. This is done so well. J.J. Abrams is has a great record of making good movies. Yeah, and he's just a producer. I didn't even see his name on the script writing. He just something that came to him, and he was like, "Oh, this is good." And he made usually, made sure it got made. Yeah, yeah, usually if he supports it, it's for the good. most part he's got good taste. Yeah, and so. Um, that is our review of yeah, it's Overlord. Short, There's a whole lot that I don't really want to talk about. For like with the, 40 minutes. It's a whole yeah. lot that I don't really want to talk about because... Yeah, if I we talk yeah, about spoilery, anything spoilery, more, yeah. it will... I mean, I've almost said too much by saying yeah. Resident Evil yeah. stuff, but yeah. even that it doesn't really exactly tell you what's going even on. Even if you knew exactly what was going on, the movie is very well made. It's well told. It doesn't ever slip into predictability there's one spot in the movie where i was like eh that seemed to happen a little a little too easily but uh they just cut away for a second and then came back and something worked worked itself out so there was some time displacement there but it was the thing with the flamethrower near the end oh where she had the flamethrower that's all i'm gonna say right but she uh but it was Cool. I mean, it was cool, and it was like, okay, and by the time I started thinking, wait a minute, it was already on to something else because it was just a bunch of badass at that point. Yeah, it's great. I feel like it's intense, it's exciting, and the people sitting in the in the rows with us, the guy sitting next to me, he was just like an older guy, maybe maybe a few years older than us, like 50-something. He, he, he kept jumping at all the spots, so it's like a thrilling ride, and... Again, I'm sad that it's not doing well at the box office because I feel like that might be the best yeah. movie that's out right now. And by the way, genre-wise, it's the only one that's out right now. There's not a whole lot of... Yeah, well, everyone goes to see The Nun, and I know that's not a great movie because even I asked people that saw it, and they're like, eh, not, you know, yeah. it's okay. Um, so, yeah, everyone's seeing all these horror movies, and then 
you would think they would go see this. Those same yeah. people. Yeah. Why aren't they seeing it? I don't what know. What is better than over? I don't know. Anyway, it's the oh, it's, they're I, I, the kids. The kids made their parents go see Grinch. So maybe yeah. next month or next well, week we. You know, will... you know. Here's the here's the thing where it's it's a rated R movie. The PG thirteen audience doesn't really get to see it. Yeah, but the PG thirteen audience still wants to see it. Yeah, without their parents' right. permission. <laughs> so um, that's our review of that movie. Go see it. I, Help it out. I want to tell you guys. We mentioned a couple of things like uh, War is Hell and Man Plays God. Um, and since you mentioned it, I want to bring up the, that uh, this coming Friday we have an episode of our other podcast, Film Reverie, yeah. where we're going to go over the um, different kinds of stories. The, yeah, the yeah. different, the main. Well, there's about thirteen. We might add uh, one or two more, yeah. but like around thirteen main stories that Hollywood uh, uses um, in the scripts that they approve or the movies that they make. Uh, War is Hell is one of them. Mm-hmm. Man Plays God. That's like the Frankenstein Yeah, Jurassic movie. Park. Yeah. Uh, Jurassic Park, yeah. yeah. So we're going to have a special episode where we just tell the 13 stories Hollywood tell. Yeah. So uh, check that out. Film Reverie is coming uh, later this week. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> so I wanted to spend a couple minutes talking about a couple of the movies that are out right now that... The ones we're excited to the see. The ones I'm excited to see. Or movies that are coming out. So... The Grinch, we already talked about. Yeah. Girl in the Spider's Web. I, eh. I still want to see it. I kind of want to see it. But it's right now 43% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's the critics. Rotten Tomatoes is usually accurate. Okay, so I don't, I don't like how the, the rating system now is turned into a an average of everybody. Like the star yeah. rating. Like I want, I, I want to see what tr- people really think about it. But this is a good... The Rotten Tomatoes is generally a good gauge of do people like it or do people not like it. And crit, and you get, uh, you get average the average people versus critics. Right. So yeah. it's 43% on critics and 56% with the audience. So even the audience is like 50-50 on yeah. it. But The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, which is a new Co- Coen Brothers movie, and they always have a high rating from critics. Sometimes I feel like they just get a pass a lot of times because of well, Coen Brothers. What? Coen? I, don't, I can't think of a Coen Brothers movie that was bad. Was there a bad one? They, they make some movies that are, that are not necessarily satisfying, but they're great movies. Yeah. They like great, interesting stories that you're like, yeah, that was good, but what, what am I watching? Right. Um, uh, but they... More times than not, make great movies that you're like, that was fucking good. Yes. Um, there's a movie here called The Front Runner, which has Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. <clears throat> and it's directed by uh, Reitman. Reitman. What's the guy's name? Alan? Not mm-hmm. Alan Rickman. <laughs> That's Alan Rickman, dipshit. Okay. He's dead. Snape? Snape is dead. Um, He's awful. He directed Juno, and he directed the movie we saw earlier this month, this year, Tully. Okay. Um, yeah, that guy. Jason. Jason Reitman. <clears throat> okay. That was wonderful. So it's directed by Jason Reitman, and it's about the front runner. It's a political story, basically, from the... Um, it's happened in 87 and 88. The American Senator Gary Hart's presidential campaign in 1988 is derailed when he's caught in a scandalous love affair. Huh. So it was back before the 24-hour news cycle started kicking oh, in when you could hide so, shit when you could hide stuff but it, he basically was one of the first stories where a tabloid story became headline news because most of the time uh in, in an interview i listened to recently uh jason reitman said uh one of his people said it best whereas like before the gary hart thing in 88 or 87 it was never important after that, it was always important. It's somewhere in the middle of whether it should always be important or not. But it just turned into it turned tabloid news into headline news. So anyway, it's, of course, Hugh Jackman is great. Yeah. It's, I'm probably not going to see that. That sounds really boring. You haven't even seen the trailer. You don't. How would I was you know? Alive in eighty, whatever. I remember Gary Hart. I don't need to see a movie about. <laughs> I'm the snob. I'm do- all I'm going to say is I'm the snob, apparently. You decide, without knowing anything about a movie, yeah. more times than I do that you don't want to see it. It's probably true. But I'm labeled the snob because there are just certain things that I don't like. Yeah, you are a snob, though. 
<laughs> We're both snobs, just be honest. <laughs> but hold on though, because I I have gone to see everything that's come out recently. That that I mean, there's nothing I've said. Nah, I don't want to see that. Let's not. You more times than not, I've gone by myself to a movie because you didn't want to go because I don't want to see that. Well, also, I know that you like going alone to movies. Yeah, don't act like you're doing me a favor. <laughs> <laughs> don't act I like you're. Don't play high and mighty like you're doing me a favor. You didn't want to go to the movies. Most of the time, yeah. <laughs> Listen, and you have Listen. this too. You, we have, we know what we like and don't like. Mm-hmm. So, for the most part, we can uh, pretty accurately gauge by a trailer whether or not, even without the trailer, we can gauge whether or not we're going to like it by the time by the end of the movie. And we're most of the times we're right. So I don't feel like, uh, you know. And sometimes <laughs> I need to be in the mood for a certain kind of movie. I was in the mood for an overlord when we went to go see it, and it mm. it lived up to what we were hoping it would be, which was great. Okay, that's all bullshit. However, <laughs> Dude. the movie I'm most looking forward to currently, right now, the one that I can't wait to come out, is Widows. Who's Widows, in that? the one. <sighs> What's that about? It's the heist movie where Liam Neeson is oh, is a crime lord and really? his people die, and it's directed. Our by... husbands died, and we've got three days to become a well fine oil. It's written machine. by Gillian Flynn and directed by Steve McQueen. Uh, Steve McQueen. He's dead. Steve McQueen is an actor. <laughs> Steve McQueen currently is a is a African is a black filmmaker. He's okay. from he's from England. He's London, oh. but um, it is getting it's ninety four percent. On Rotten Tomatoes right now. You're going to not go see it because it's about widows. It's a now, classic story. If it's 90% Rotten Tomatoes, it's I'll based. See it. It's based on a um, miniseries from the UK. And uh, they just Americanized it. They turned it into Chicago instead of, you know, and they made a two-hour movie instead of a miniseries out of it. Hmm. And uh, it's getting great reviews. I'm all for women, woman-centric movies. Yeah, or women. me I, too. I want women... Because if if anything, at the very least, I'm just tired of seeing the same the same stories. dudes in movies. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's do it. Um, I don't know if I buy the plot so much, but maybe it'll make more sense. Um, maybe it makes more sense as a movie and not so much as a trailer. Oh, damn! Beautiful boy is playing. Okay, so this the movies movies I really want to see right now that are out. And they're just not playing near us. Our beautiful boy, the one with Steve Carell about his oh, the drug addict son. I want to see the family that. Like that. And can you ever forgive I me? I want to see the. Can you ever I know. forgive me? I know. I've been wanting with, to see that for with Melissa McCarthy. Yeah. yeah. So those two movies are out. I would. I got a. I got a Thanksgiving break coming up. We're, um, hopefully, we can catch a bunch yes. of those while it's coming Let's out. Anyway. Do that. So. Um, those are coming up. They have like interesting award movies coming out that I'm really excited to see. Can't wait. Uh, we did just choose to do a, a fun, you know, explosions and death you know, genre film, and I was pleasantly surprised with Overlord. I was very happy with it. Anything else? No. All right. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, I'm not going to make you listen to this guy any longer. Any longer. Uh huh. All right. If you uh, saw Overlord. If you're one of the people that saw it, even though it's tanking at the box office, please let us know. Movieisms at gmail.com. Hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, wherever. I'm Becca Meyer. He's Balding Ewok. And, uh, yeah, until next time, uh, we will see you at the movies. Movieisms is a production of Super Mega Ultra Entertainment and is produced by Michael Beckemeyer and Bradley Kingston. If you'd like to find out more, follow us on Twitter or Instagram. And make sure you click like on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash movieisms. If you're enjoying this podcast, please take a moment and give us a five-star review in iTunes. It only takes a minute, and it helps us out more than you can imagine. Thank you very much, and until next time, we'll see you at the movies.